Hi guys, it's Inventor Andy, and today we're going to be looking at two of the time-based drivers on the Atmel SAM D21 Explained Pro Board. So we're going to be looking at the calendar driver, and we're going to be looking at the timer driver. So it's quite a short tutorial, but it'll give you an idea of what you can do with the onboard clocks. So, as usual, if we go to start.atmel.com and click Create New Project. Okay, if we go to show only boards and select our D21 Explained Pro board, and then we're going to click create new project. Okay, if we go ahead and rename this to RTC, that's what we're going to call our test project. And we're going to add three drivers here. So if we go to add software component, select drivers, and we're going to add calendar. We're going to add timer, and we're going to add USART. Okay, go ahead and add those. Okay, so now we're going to go to our clock settings and we're going to configure some of the clocks. So we're going to use the 32 kilohertz high accuracy internal oscillator. And if we click on the settings for that, we want the 32 kilohertz output, the 1K output, and we want to set that to 10 clock cycles for the startup time. Okay. And then we're going to select generic clock generator 2, click on the settings, and we're going to set that to our high accuracy internal oscillator. We're going to divide the selection, and we're going to divide it by 4. Okay, close that. Okay, so if we select the generic clock generator 3, and click on the settings, and we're going to use the ultra low power internal oscillator. Okay, we divide that selection and set the division to four. Okay, now go back to the dashboard and let's select our calendar driver. Let's just rename this calendar. And our real time clock is going to be generic clock generator 2, which is what we just configured. And we're going to divide that by 1024. So what that means is currently that clock will pulse at 1024 times per second. So we're going to divide that by 1024 so that it only pulses once per second. Okay, if we go to our timer. And for the timer counter, we're going to select the clock generator 3, which is the ultra low power clock. We're going to divide that by 1024 again so that we get one pulse per second. And we set the one timer tick to 1024. Finally, let's set up our UART debug. So this is 38400. If you remember the TX and RX pins for the EDBG USART converter are 22 and 23. Okay, let's rename this debug out. And if we go to our pin marks, Stretch that out a little bit and the label. Now we're going to find our LED pin. So LED zero, and we're going to call this LED. We're going to set the pin mode to digital out and set the initial level to low. 
Okay, let's go ahead and export this project. Okay, so if we go ahead and open that project, give that a moment. Okay. Okay, so let's open our main file. Now, what we're going to be doing with this project is we're going to set a timer task, which will trigger every second, and that's going to toggle the LED pin. And we're going to set some calendar alarms. So when it reaches certain times, it's going to print an alarm message to our debug console. So let's include some files that we're going to need first. STDIO. Lib and string. Okay, now we're going to create some structs for our calendar alarms. So static struct calendar alarm alarm one and static struct calendar calendar alarm. And we're also going to create a task for our timer. We'll call that task. Okay, so now we're going to create our callback function for the timer task. If you're wondering where I'm getting these from, by the way, if you go to the examples and our driver examples, you can see we've got some example functions here. Let's close that. Okay, so what we're going to do here is just toggle the LED. So we'll use the GPIO toggle pin level, and we're going to set that to the LED pin. Okay. So next up, we're going to create our callback function for the alarm. So okay, so let's create a date time object. time and it helps if I spell struct right. Now we're going to get the date and time from our calendar. So we do calendar get date time and we're going to call our calendar and we're going to put it into the date time we've just created. Okay, next up we're going to create a little string to print to the debug output. So. so we're doing car alarm message equals malloc. 32 bytes should be enough. And now we're going to format that message. So, 
sprintf. We're going to save it to alarm message. And we're going to write alarm at oops. Okay, so that percent O2D means that we will print two digits of the number. Let's put a carriage return in there as well. Okay, so let's input the variables that we're going to put into the string. So date time dot date dot year, date time dot date dot month, date time dot date dot day, and then date time dot time dot hour, date time dot time dot minute and date time dot time dot second. Okay, and finally we're going to write this to our debug out console. So I write debug out. We're going to write the alarm mess oh alarm message. Okay, so that's it. That's our two callback functions registered. Now let's go to our main program. Okay, so first we're going to enable the UART for our debug console. So we start sync enable debug out. Next, we're going to set up our calendar. So, we're going to create some structs for the date and time. We're going to enable our calendar. Okay, so now we're going to set the date and time on the calendar. So calendar set date. We're going to do calendar and we're going to set that to date. The same for time. So calendar set time. Okay, so now we're going to create some alarms. So let's do alarm one first. And we're going to set the date time. We're going to set that to five seconds. And the option is going to be calendar alarm match. Now we've got a few options here but we're going to do match second. So what that means is that this will match every time the second counter hits five. So a minute and five seconds, two minutes and five seconds, three minutes and five seconds. If we did calendar alarm match minute and we set the minutes and the seconds what it will do is it will match, it will trigger the alarm every time that it reaches say 12 minutes and five seconds. So every hour at 12 minutes and 5 seconds past the hour it will match the alarm and trigger the alarm. So finally we want to set this to be a repeatable alarm. 
So this will keep doing it, it won't just trigger once. And now let's set up our second one. So alarm two. Take time, take time. Seconds, and let's set this to say 25 seconds. Match that to seconds again. And we're gonna set this to do only one shot this time. So this will only match the first time that it reaches the 25 second mark, just to show you the difference. Okay, now let's set our alarms. So calendar set alarm. We'll set that to calendar. Set alarm one. And we're going to set the alarm callback function. Okay. Now let's set our second one. We're going to use the same alarm callback function. Now we're going to set up our timer function. So, our task interval is at one second. Our task callback is the timer task callback function. And our mode is going to be timer task repeat. So again we've got the one shot option which means that it will only trigger once. The repeat option means that obviously it will keep repeating as long as the program is running. Okay let's add our timer task. And let's start our timer. Okay, if we go to our data visualizer and select our virtual COM port and set the board rate to 38400, click connect. And let's go ahead and build this. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. As you can see, the LED is flashing about once every second. Okay, so as you can see, we've triggered the first alarm, and we've triggered the second alarm. And let's see if that first alarm gets triggered again. There we go. So there you have it. That's how we use the calendar and timer functions. Now it's worth noting that with the timer at the moment we've got it set up to a one second interval. What we can do is set up the clocks so that that timer counter pulses at say a thousand times a second and then you can have timers that are running at a much quicker rate so you can have them run in every half a second or every hundredth of a second okay thanks for watching guys hopefully i'll see you soon hi guys it's inventor andy here thank you for watching my video if you like the video please click like please subscribe to my channel and please feel free to add any comments if you've got any suggestions for tutorials or videos that i can do thanks very much guys